Following the S-Class, in 1921, the U.S. began its first true post-World War I designed submarines. These were the V-Class. In truth, they should be called the Five Classes because if you thought the S-Class wasn't homogenous, then wait till you see the V-Class. The S-Class at least had the feature of having a common function. The V-Class, on the other hand, was made up of five groups of submarines with wildly different roles, sizes, equipment, and abilities. Remember, the Roman numeral for five is V. In the post-World War I era, the U.S. began taking a long, hard look at what the future of submarines would be. It's not that German submarines had been a failure, just the opposite. Going right to the top was Lothar von Arnold de la Perriere, who sank 195 ships for 455,000 tons, the most successful ship commander of any type in history, bar none. In four and a quarter years, 350 U-boats had sunk about 5,000 ships for just over 12,850,000 tons close to half the total British merchant fleet. In return, they had lost 178 of their own number, a 28 to 1 kill ratio. At its highest, the U-boat had brought England to within a month of starvation. With the war now over, no enemy on the near horizon, the Washington Treaty taking large bites out of construction, and the 51 S-boats available to fill the attack sub -roll, the U.S. decided to experiment with other ways to use the submarine. While the entire V-Class is generally considered a failure, they did succeed in one very important manner. They taught the all-important lesson of what not to do during a time and in quantities that mistakes could be afforded to be made. These nine boats in five experimental classes would be the only subs built by the U.S. for a decade. The first of these was the three large boats of the 2,119 surfaced and 2,506 submerged ton V1 class. The reason for these boats being nearly twice the weight of even the heaviest S class was their intended mission. The S class were meant to be attack boats, subs that sailed from bases to attack enemy ships. You don't deploy attack subs, you unleash them. The V-1s, on the other hand, were meant to be fleet subs. This means the intent was for them to sail with the U.S. fleet as escorts, presumably across the Pacific to do battle with the Japanese fleet. The sail with the fleet required long range and the ability to reach at least 21 knots while on the surface. Remember, submarines in these days spent most of their time on the surface. To continue the trend of trying to prevent Electric Boat from gaining a monopoly on the submarine construction market, all three boats were designed by the Navy and built at its own Portsmouth, New Hampshire yard. So how did they work out? In short, not well. They had chronic mechanical problems, especially in their gen engines, which were knockoffs of German ones. Even when things did work like they were supposed to, they never reached their intended surface speed of 21 knots or their submerged speed of 9 knots. This meant they were totally inadequate for their role as an escort submarine as they could never seriously hope to keep up with the fast moving ships. Nor could they simply be recast as attack boats. Their enormous size made them slow to dive, difficult to maneuver, and easy to detect. In addition, their massive 5-inch 51 caliber deck guns, the standard secondary gun on battleships at the time, made them bow heavy. The concept of a fleet submarine would have to wait a long time to become viable. Specifically, it would have to wait for another technical revolution, nuclear power. Main armament was six 21-inch torpedo tubes, four forward and two aft for 12 torpedoes. A single 5-inch 51 caliber open mount deck gun was originally carried. Propulsion was an unusual arrangement, but one required in light of the required speed for their size. Their main engines aft were two diesels that generated 2,250 horsepower that directly drove the two propellers while on the surface. 
forward they had a pair of 1,000 horsepower diesels for recharging the batteries. Since these secondary engines were linked in a parallel circuit through the batteries to the 1,200 horsepower electric motors used to drive the sub while submerged, they could be used to boost the main engines on the surface. This gave them a top surface speed of just over 18 knots and a top submerged speed of 7 knots. Diving depth was again 200 feet. Many modifications were made to these boats. In 1928, in light of their failure as fleet boats, the original 5-inch 51 caliber deck gun was replaced with a lighter, less cumbersome 3-inch 50 caliber gun to help relieve the overweight problem at the bow. Originally named V1, V2, and V3, in March of 1931, they were renamed Barracuda, Bass, and Bonita, respectively. In late 1942 through early 1943, they were heavily modified to become clandestine cargo subs. All six torpedo tubes, the deck gun, and their rear main engines were removed. The forward engines were replaced with new ones that generated the same horsepower but were more reliable. This of course seriously reduced their surface speed and as far as as known they never deployed in this role. V1, later Barracuda, was started October 20th, 1921 and completed October 1st, 1924. V2, later Bass, was also started October 20th, 1921 and completed September 26th, 1925. V3, later Bonita, was started November 16th, 1921 and completed May 22nd, 1926. All three returned to service from reserve in September of 1940 and patrolled the Panama Canal Zone until starting their modifications in October of 1942. Thereafter, they operated out of New London, Connecticut as training subs until being decommissioned March 3rd of 1945. Post-war, Barracuda and Bonita were sold for scrap and Bass was sunk as a target which is readily accessible to skilled divers.